guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. This one's going to be kind of a special video because this is kind of a special knife. Now, I won't call this a full review because of the fact that this is not my knife. Uh, and so two things. One, uh, I'm pretty careful with it. I'm not going to put it through the same kind of uses that I would put a knife through that was my own personal knife. Uh, number two, I don't want to keep it that long. So I'm not going to keep someone's knife for you know a month or two uh, getting fully acquainted with it the way I normally would before I do my typical reviews. And so for those reasons, this is going to be sort of a, a review-ish overview talk about this knife. Uh, more than a first impressions because I have spent a little more time with it. I've got to cut with it, carry it around a bit. Um, but I haven't put it to the same level of use and spent the amount of time with it that I would normally want to do for a full review. So I want to get that out there right away. Also, I want to say a huge thank you for the very kind fellow Canadian viewer who sent this along because this was a knife I was super, super excited about. And to get a chance to handle this and experience it, it is really a spectacular knife. Definitely one of the most outstanding knives of 2019. Um, and, and because of that, I really was excited to get my hands on it. So a huge thank you for allowing me to do that. First thing I've got to say is I love the Pena designs. I, I just, as I scroll through his custom knives, I just think every one is interesting and compelling, uh, you know, outside of my price range, but very, very cool. And so I, I look forward to further collaborations. I would love to see something like this in a, you know, three or three and a half inch blade length. Uh, that would be that would be pretty spectacular, and I think it would be a little nicer in hand as well. I mean, you know, this is a small knife, and it it's just feels small in hand, not uncomfortable, but small. So uh, that's that's the first thing I want to say is just re-express the the respect I have for Enrique Pena. I love the influence that he's having on the industry, where we're seeing a lot of companies come out with sort of modern-ish, traditional style knives. I think that's really really cool. Uh, Leong Ma has done a number of those as well, and again, I, I same thing. I think it's really a great trend that makes for some interesting options for uh, for those of us who are interested in owning these knives. Size and weight guys, this is a small knife, six and a half inches overall, two and 13 sixteenths on the blade length, three and three quarters closed. So that's the closed length and that does include the little extra uh, blade that sticks out here past the top of the knife. Three and a quarter inches of grip area. So for me, this is a four finger knife, just barely, but it is four fingers, which definitely is something that I look for. I, I, three finger knives are just not for me at all. And if it was that small, I probably wouldn't even be doing this video, but uh, it does get all my fingers on there. And it only weighs in at 2.2 ounces. So really, you know, when you're carrying this, you hardly even notice. Uh, so from that standpoint, I mean, typical small knife numbers that, that probably aren't unexpected to any of you. The next thing I want to take a look at here is this blade. And this blade is really, really nicely done. Riot has awesome, awesome grinds, and this is no exception. Now, I do like this blade styling. You know, on a knife like this, you kind of expect to see just a full flat grind here with a straight spine. Uh, so the fact that we've got a bit of a clip and a swedge here, you know, borrowing some some modern cues or some modern knife grinding, you know, design elements is really nice to see. And I also really, really love that dual directional grind. So you can see those grind lines there on the primary bevel and then on the flats if I can get a catch of the light the right way you can see that they go the opposite direction and that creates a really really nice effect and it definitely adds something ex extra cool to this knife okay um, one of the comparisons I've got for you is this James Brand slip joint and that's sort of what we're used to seeing with a knife like this right just a full flat grind square spine so those extra little flourishes are very, very nice. And we're not done with the extra little flourishes, but before we move on, let me just say, um, this blade stock is not super thick. The edge thickness is quite nice. So I did do a little bit of cutting with this and it cuts very well. This is a nice knife to use. Obviously I wouldn't want, I don't know, to try and skin out a, an elk with it or, you know, defend my life in a self-defense situation with it. But in terms of an EDC knife, very, very nice. Um, yeah, I just uh, highly useful blade shape, really nicely balanced uh, for its size. I will say this is pretty well balanced to give you a little bit of extra toughness than maybe a full flat grind would do. All right. So moving on now to the action and guess what guys? 
the action is very, very good. Nice and smooth. What we'd expect from Ria. The detent is great so that you can consistently uh, flip it with your thumb over the top of the knife. Now, I will say I have tried to get the, uh, the index finger deployment. There we go. And it only works for me about half the time. Uh, so, yeah. There you go. So I can do it, but not frequently. Uh, for me, it's more natural with thumb. And I have to say one little note of interest about this that's been really fun for me is I've handed this knife over to a couple of friends and they're not really knife guys, but they know I am. And so they'll ask me, you know, what, what do you got in your pocket today? And I show them this and every single one of them right away just goes, oh, okay. And they, they use the nail and they can open it up and they're like, oh, that's really smooth, pretty cool. And then they try to close it. They immediately assume it's a slip joint not noticing the lock over there. Uh, and so I have to kind of show them, well, one, it locks, but two, uh, you can deploy it using the front flipper, which they, it always impresses everyone. They've always been like, whoa, what, how did you do that? That's amazing. Uh, so that's, it's kind of a cool novel way of doing this. And I really, really like the implementation of the front, fr front flipper, the way Pena has done it here. Uh, this is one of my favorite ways of doing that. It, it just seems to work so nicely. Now, I will say, I don't know how well this would work on a larger knife or a stiffer detent. Uh, it would have to, uh, this is perfectly dialed in. And I think that's going to have to be something that moving forward, any knife that uses this option, you're going to have to make sure it's right. Uh, the next thing we've got, of course, lock bar, very accessible, nice and easy to get a hold of. And because of this is a bolster lock, you don't have any worries about putting a lot of pressure on the lock bar when you're holding the knife to deploy it. All right. So I, lock up and deployment are just fantastic. This is a super fun knife. I have to say this. Um, I mentioned it, I think, in the first impressions as well, but this is a highly addictive knife. If I'm in the same room as this knife, I just feel like I have to pick it up and flip it open a few times. It's just one of those knives that you could sit, you know, for hours watching a TV show or whatever, just flipping it open. It's so nice to do. Uh, so uh, lock of and deployment action overall gets top marks. It's really, really well done. Um, even, you know, I worried as I looked at this that I wouldn't have enough room to get my fingers in there and, and I'd have difficulty accessing the lock bar. But even that has been very nice. No issues whatsoever. Now, handle. There are some handle options here. I'm going to kind of describe this one, but go ahead and check out Blade HQ or, you know, wherever, wherever you're going to buy these and you'll find a few different handle vari variations. <laughs> very options. That's an interesting uh, new word. Um, so this is a bolster lock. We've got this great Great micarta handle, beautifully done. Uh, really feels great in hand. Of course, that's why we like micarta so much because it feels so nice in hand. Uh, titanium bolster, of course, titanium. And, and this is not, this bolster is not laid over top of this. This is all one piece and the micarta is inlaid into it. Got a titanium backspacer here and a milled titanium clip all put together with torque screws and very nicely put together. I might add the fit and finish is very good on this. Uh, I like the way they put this together. Uh, it definitely, you know, obviously an open back like that is not what you expect to see on a traditional knife. You're expecting to see the the spring at the back here, the way you do on this one. So it's kind of an interesting, you know, as you turn the knife over, there are lots of little unexpected things like a lock, like an open back. Um, Mill, uh, a pocket clip being there at all is a bit of a surprise. Now, here's one thing I did think through a little bit in, in preparing for this review. Um, whether or not I thought this knife was better with the pocket clip or whether it would be cool to go without the pocket clip. And overall, I came out with, I think the clip is helpful. A couple of reasons for that. One, of course, it just makes the knife easily accessible and, and you kind of know where it is. Two, this knife is on bearings and I've had trouble with bearing knives. Uh, if they're, if they reach down to the very bottom of your pocket where all the lint and garbage and crap is, then there's potential for that lint and garbage and crap to get into the pivot where if it's clipped and it's being held up kind of out of the very bottom of your pocket, y it avoids that situation at least to a certain degree. All right. Um, let's do some comparisons. I don't have a ton of knives. I do have that slip joint that I was just showing you. So I'll bring that guy in because it's about the same size. So there's that little uh, James Brand slip joint. It's a bit smaller, as you can see. 
Um, similar, you know, I think James Rand is kind of doing this uh, whole hipster, whatever kind of vibe. And, you know, this kind of captures that. Um, of course, there's going to be lots and lots of, I don't have a trapper here, but there's going to be lots and lots of trappers built by all the, the typical companies, whether it be Buck or Case or GEC or, uh, you know, there's a bunch of old ones too that I'm probably going to permit. I think Camillus used to do some, uh, Queen. Uh, I'm sure there's more that we could list. All right, so I've got, uh, I've got that quick comparison for you. Let's get that, get that guy out of the way. And let's bring in another slip joint. Now, this is interesting because it's sort of a similar approach here with the PMP user where we're dealing with modern materials. We've got a titanium bolster, carbon fiber scales. Uh, this is, however, a t more traditional slip joint, so there's no locking mechanism on this. It would be interesting, I think, if they did a locking version of this knife, uh, whether they do a back lock or liner, I don't know. Uh, probably a back lock would be aesthetically the, the nicest. Um, you can see, I, I like this knife a little bit better, largely because I've got a little more cutting and I've got a little more handle real estate. It's just a little more hand filling, the extra size, makes a big difference to me. And then of course, this guy's got the wire clip instead. So uh, both have the same steel. I don't know if I'd mentioned, but this does have M390 steel. Usually that's something you wanna mention in a review when we're talking about the blade. So yeah, great steel. Uh, by the way, I also love the sharpening choil, the way they've done this, it's way out of the way. It's gonna give you lots of longevity, lots of sharpening time there. And I should have mentioned those two things at the beginning. I don't have a time machine, so I'm not going to go back and do it. You're going to have to uh, <laughs> hear it right now, even though it's the wrong place. Uh, so we've got some comparisons. Uh, let's give you my overall conclusion. Look, guys, this is one of the coolest knives of 2019 for sure. Uh, it's not a knife that I necessarily want to own, but I can get why a ton of people want to. And if you try and go out and buy one of these right now, good luck. Now, to my knowledge, there will be more coming. So if you want one, I think you can still get one. Uh, just might be a little bit of a wait for you. Or, of course, you can go to the secondary market and find one over there. Uh, th this knife just pulls together all kinds of cool stuff, a very cool traditional design. You know, it riffs on that design a little bit and, and departs in some cool ways that I think make it stand out. It's extremely high end, great fit and finish, great action, all the things that we expect from, you know, any, any high end folder or any high end flipper, uh, but just in a traditional design. Uh, very usable, very carryable. I think this one is a total home run. And in fact, it's not as crazy expensive as some of the Riot collaborations have been. I mean, and then normally they're not that expensive, but I think this guy retails for like 250 or something like that, maybe 270. Um, and, and that's pretty reasonable for what you're getting. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again, Steve, for sending this along. We will talk to you soon.